Uh, hello, this is the start of the session 13 and we continue with more imperfections in uh, solid materials. After talking about uh, metals and ceramics, now we talk about uh, defects in polymers. Defects uh, usually, are, uh, in some extent, um, are due uh, to chain packing errors and impurities such as chain ends and side ends, as you can see here, chain ends. Uh, or side ends like a uh, dangling of chains um, there are also impurities as I said um, or other defects like vacancy and branching as you can see here uh, how these point defects or defects are generally uh, produced and made and created in uh, solid uh, there are different items uh, and features that are methods that produces the point defects, uh, including growth and synthesis. Impurities may be added to the material during synthesis. Um, this can be due to thermal and thermomechanical treatments and other stimuli. Uh, of course, heating to high temperature and treating like quenching can make this defect or remove part of the defect so it has a uh, effect on point defects heating in vacuum also is one of those methods uh, plastic deformation is another one and also uh, radiation is also another method to make point defect in polymers uh, impurities in solids are denoted by weight percent that can be defined here as you can see M1 is the mass of component 1 and this is mass of component 2 so mass of each component divided by total mass times by 100 the atom percent is uh, or can be found using this relation in which N, M, <coughs> N superindex M1 is number of moles for component 1 and this is number of uh, moles of component 2 multiplied by 100 the number of moles is actually equal to M prime divided by A1 uh, one of them is mass and the other one is atomic weight of the component after talking about point defect now we talk about line defects uh, dislocations are type of line defects uh, slips uh, basically between crystal planes result when dislocation moves so if we have dislocation move we will see a slip uh, between the, uh, the planes uh, the dislocations produce permanent uh, sorry permanent or what we know as plastic deformation permanent deformation or plastic deformation here is, is a schematic of uh, zinc carbide which has hexagonal uh, closed pack structure before deformation and then after tensile elongation you see slip steps uh, basically linear defects um, or dislocation are one-dimensional defects that are around uh, which atoms are misaligned so this happen when some atoms are misaligned edge dislocation so uh, dislocation are generally in two types edge and screw edge dislocation is when an extra half plane of atoms inserted in a crystal structure here Berger's vector which is measure of lattice d uh, detortion and shown by B is perpendicular to the dislocation line we will talk about it in the next slide and in screw dislocation we have uh, spiral planar ramp resulting from shear deformation and here also Berger's vector is is different from edge dislocation and here it's parallel to dislocation line as I said in the previous slide um, edge dislocation is uh, when we have one dimensional defect uh, this defect is uh, caused by this half plane as you can see of atoms which is inserted here so what you see you see this region of the crystal is stretched under tension and this 
portion is under compression this result in a one line that we know as edge dislocation and you see a Berger's vector shown here which is perpendicular to this line which is uh, this line is actually the edge dislocation is perpendicular to the uh, plane of monitor how to show Berger's vector we start from uh, this point here so we go we have to go around the dis uh, dislocation so I go one two three units to right so I reach here one two three and then I go uh, four, uh, five units so that uh, we can pass the the edge dislocation so one two three four is also fine and then again we go back three units one two three we go another four up one two three four so this is a uh, end and this is a start so we connect this end point to the start point and this is our uh, this is called our Burgess vector as you see this is perpendicular to this edge uh, dislocation line uh, as I said uh, another type of uh, linear dislocation is screw dislocation in the previous one which was the edge dislocation we had a uh, had an uh, had a half plane uh, uh, of atoms extra atom in the crystal but here in the screw dislocation there is no half plane the dislocation is sorry the whole crystal or lattice is under shear in the screw dislocation it's like that half of this uh, lattice is going towards the right side of the plane and this uh, one going towards the left side of the plane uh, this is like these two planes are shearing on top of each other and the line in between these two plane is our dislocation, our linear dislocation or screw dislocation. Uh, to find the Berger's vector, we follow this um, uh, direction, or uh, it's like right-hand side direction. So it's uh, like that I <coughs> put my thumb along this direction and then go clo uh, clockwise, as shown here. Uh, from say from this point so what I do I go uh, I have to go around the our screw dislocation so from here I go two points down and then one unit cell two unit cell three four to the left I have to go up one two three four so that we pass the screw dislocation another four one sorry two three four to the right and we go two down so if I connect the start to the end one this is my Berger's vector as you can see oops, here which is parallel this one is parallel to this uh, edge dislocation sorry this uh, screw dislocation I'm drawing it as a uh, assuming hidden lines you can see here and our Berger's vector which is also shown here in pink is parallel to this screw dislocation this is also shown in this top view where you can see the size and direction of this Berger vector the size is equal to one unit cell and the whole uh, top part of the lattice is going to the right and this uh, part the lower part is going to the uh, left side and they are sharing on top of each other it's called a screw dislocation because if say for example we start from here go two to, uh, to the left one two three four to the right one two three four to right again and then four back two to the left then this is our first breakers vector if we continue another two and then four 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 two then we see we are uh, going around in the spiral um, pass and it's the same as a spiral pass of uh, a threaded screw that's why it's called uh, screw dislocation. As it's here I uh, mentioned the Berger's vector is the vector that uh, completes a circuit uh, drawn around a uh, dislocation. Uh, edge dislocation is shown here also schematically in another presentation you see this half plane which is inserted uh, between these planes of atom so this is a normal view and the Berger's vector here you see another edge dislocation uh, here shown on the 3D format 
and this is screw dislocation shown here. So a combination of these two results in a mixed dislocation as you can see here. We have Berger's vector resulting from edge dislocation and another Berger's vector resulting from uh, screw dislocation. A 3D representation of uh, these two dislocations is shown beautifully in the uh, uh, video prepared by uh, Wiley. I only have a screenshot of the presentation. Here again you see edge, screw dislocation, of course this is a mixed uh, dislocation. Can we observe and see imperfection in dislocation? Yes. Uh, this is an SEM or scanning electron microscope graph showing dislocation sorry showing dislocations in a metal and you can uh, compare the size of dislocation with this scale which is uh, 0.2 micrometer uh, as we said uh, the movement of dislocation in a material result in uh, plastic or permanent deformation uh, in crystal structure dislocation move and they prefer to move along uh, closed pack plane so if uh, you assume this uh, arrangement uh, here uh, we see closed, mat, uh, closed pack plane and bottom and on top here which is shown with gray and these are also showing closed pack directions. Uh, the set of closed pack planes and closed pack directions uh, in which dislocation tend to move more is called a slip plane uh, sorry slip system. For FCC uh, there are many closed pack planes and direction, of course, many um, uh, slip system. And for HP, HCP, there is only uh, one plane and three directions. So generally, in FCC and BCC that have more slip systems, the material uh, is uh, or can break in different angles. This results in uh, in more ductile behavior. So in these materials, FCC and BCC. Uh, material can propagate or this location can propagate in different direction compared to HCP uh, and this is why usually HCP uh, uh, HCP materials are more brittle compared to uh, FCC and BCC ones. An example is shown here under uh, tensile test. Uh, the third type of uh, defects are surface defects. Uh, one of the things that uh, increases um, the surface defects are catalyst. Uh, catalyst increases the rate of a chemical reaction without being uh, consumed. So what happens active sites and catalysts are normally uh, making or a sort of uh, surface defect as you can see here uh, schematically. And this is a catalyst shown under a uh, microscope image. Uh, grain boundaries as surface uh, defects, they have uh, different sizes, uh, but many of them that is very common in the metallurgy, they have they are as small as what you see in this image. Uh, you see 30 micron. This scale is 30 micron, so the size is almost like 40, 50 uh, for this one, so on and so forth. Uh, we have different sizes, of course, but. Uh, we examine these type of surface defect usually by microscopes. However, there are uh, surface defects or grain boundaries as large as uh, these ones uh, shown on light poles. Each of them are centimeters and consists of millions of atoms. Uh, generally, grains or crystallites and grain boundaries, um, they vary, as I said, uh, considerably in size. Um, Another example, apart from these um, aluminum uh, light posts, <coughs> is large single crystals of quartz or diamond or silicon. Optical microscopy is a useful method uh, that can magnify grains and grain boundaries uh, up to 2,000 times uh, in order to observe the microstructure and uh, grains of uh, materials uh, what we do is combination of polishing and the edging. Polishing removes um, surface features like scratches 
and etching changes uh, reflectance and uh, it depends of course on crystal orientation uh, in a polish and edge surface as you can see uh, the light uh, source is coming in the normal way if it's fully or if the crystallography plane are horizontal of course they reflect the light almost in the same direction and if they have or they are inclined the direction of reflection going to be different that's why we see different uh, level of light or color of these uh, grains under microscope under optical uh, microscopy uh, grain boundaries are the, of course imperfections uh, they are sub, uh, susceptible to etching so as you can see here they result um, in dark lines and of course they change in crystal orientation across boundary uh, in order to find the average size of grains because at the end of the day we have different size of grains as you can see here based on ASDM American Society for testing in materials uh, grain size number or ASDM grain size number has been introduced shown here as n small n in green and it's defined according to this relation in which capital N is the number of grains uh, per square inch at of course a 100 magnification so if we have a graph of 100 uh, times magnification uh, then we separate uh, one square inch and we count the number of grains inside it and then we plug it into this relation and then we find the grain size number according to ASTM of this uh, type of material to have a better contrast and a better visualization of microstructure of the material uh, sometime polarized uh, light is used in optical uh, microscopy for both metals and also uh, polymers uh, the range of uh, optical microscopy is uh, something around a maximum of 0.1 micrometer if we want higher resolution then of course we have to uh, go towards uh, higher frequency uh, and we use something like x-rays or electrons the problem with x-ray is uh, it's hard to focus but uh, for electrons according to their wavelength um, we are able to uh, see resolution in atomic level and electron beams or electron microscopy are working based on uh, this concept uh, these two beautiful images uh, is showing how uh, atoms are arranged and imaged and this is actually uh, taken by scanning uh, tunneling microscopy using electron beams yeah in class we will work on uh, examples of finding grain size uh, based on arbitrary lines uh, and one method and are also based on the one described by ASTM in one inch squared of uh, an image of the microstructure at the end of this chapter it's good that uh, to go and review some questions like this ones and we can discuss them uh, more in the class uh, thank you